we'll come to a proof of the quotient rule of differentiation, which states that the derivative of f of x divided by g of x with respect to x is equal to the quantity g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x, all divided by g of x squared. Or we can say the derivative is equal to the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, all divided by the denominator squared. So we'll begin by applying the limit definition of the derivative to our function, which is f of x divided by g of x. So looking at the limit definition, we have the limit as h approaches zero of, for f of the quantity x plus h, in our case, we would have f of the quantity x plus h divided by g of the quantity x plus h. And then for minus f of x, in our case, we would have f of x divided by g of x. And all this is divided by h. Now for the next step, we'll perform two operations. We want to combine the fractions in the numerator by obtaining a common denominator and then instead of dividing by h, we multiply by the reciprocal of h, which would be one over h. So for this next step here, notice how here we have one over h times. This is the difference of these two fractions where we obtained a common denominator. So for this first fraction, we multiplied by g over x over g over x. And for the second fraction, we multiplied by g of the quantity x plus h over g of the quantity x plus h. And now that we have a common denominator, now that we have a common denominator, which is g of x times g of the quantity x plus h, we can go ahead and subtract these fractions and also multiply by one over h. So here we have the limit as h approaches zero of, looking at the denominator, notice how we have a factor of h, a factor of g of x, and also a factor of g of the quantity x plus h. Looking at the numerator, we change the order of this product here and wrote g of x times f of the quantity x plus h, and then we have minus f of x times g of the quantity x plus h. Now we're going to add and subtract the same term in the numerator of our fraction, similar to what we did for the product rule. But in this case, we're going to subtract f of x times g of x, and then add f of x times g of x. So this sum is zero, so this is an equivalent fraction, just in a different form. Next we're going to perform two operations. We're going to write this fraction as a product, and also factor these two terms in the numerator, and then factor these two terms in the numerator. So looking at our next step, notice in the denominator we pulled out the factors of g of x times g of the quantity x plus h, and wrote it as a fraction as one over these two factors times this fraction here. Notice in the denominator though we still have a factor of h, a factor of g of x, and a factor of g of the quantity x plus h. And now in the numerator, notice how these two terms share a common factor of g of x. If we factor out g of x, we have g of x times the quantity f of the quantity x plus h minus f of x. Now these two fractions share a common factor of f of x, but we're going to factor out negative f of x. So we write minus f of x times, notice how from the second term if we factor out negative f of x, we're left with positive g of the quantity x plus h. If we factor out negative f of x from f of x g of x, we're left with negative or minus g of x. Next, because we have a product here, we can write this limit of a product as a product of two limits, and we'll also break up this fraction here into the difference of two fractions, and write the limit of a difference as a difference of two limits. So this first line is the same line from the previous slide. Notice how we have a product here, so we first wrote the limit as h approaches zero of this fraction times the limit of this big fraction here, which we wrote as a difference of two fractions and therefore a difference of two limits. Well this first fraction here was formed using this part of the numerator over the denominator of h. So notice how we wrote g of x times f of the quantity x plus h minus f of x all over h. So this was the first limit minus the limit where we had the fraction of this part of the numerator over the denominator of h. So we have minus the limit as h approaches zero of f of x times this difference over h. Now notice how this limit is the limit of a product and this limit is also a limit of a product. So now we'll write each of these limits as a product of limits. So the only change here is we wrote this limit as the limit as h approaches zero of g of x times 
the limit as h approaches zero of this fraction here, which is the difference quotient for f of x, and then we have minus the limit as h approaches zero of f of x times the limit as h approaches zero of this fraction, which is the difference quotient for g of x. And now we can actually evaluate each of these limits to prove the quotient rule. So looking at this first limit, as h approaches zero, g of x is not affected by h, and g of the quantity x plus h approaches g of x, so this first limit is equal to one over g of x squared, and then we have times the limit as h approaches zero of g of x is just g of x. Again, g of x is not affected by h as h goes to zero. Then we have the limit as h approaches zero of, this is the different quotient for f of x, and therefore this limit is equal to f prime of x. And then we have minus the limit as h approaches zero of f of x, which equals f of x. And then finally we have times the limit as h approaches zero of this difference quotient for g of x, which gives us g prime of x. And now multiplying, this gives us the quotient rule, which is the quantity g of x times f prime of x, minus f of x times g prime of x, all divided by g of x squared. And now we've proven the quotient rule. I hope you found this helpful.